In this video, we're gonna go over some real basic IR analysis strategies. The goal for this is to practice under analyzing IR spectra. In a previous video, I talked about how students have a tendency to want to understand every single peak present in an IR spectrum, and that's just not reasonable, and it's also not practical. It's not something that chemists do. We rarely use IR spectroscopy to completely identify or determine the structure of a molecule. IR spectroscopy is used in one of two ways. Um, one, if we're dealing with a molecule that is truly an unknown to us, like we have no idea and no guess of what the molecule might possibly be, then we're just gonna use IR to help us identify the functional groups that are present in the molecule because that's what IR shows us. So that's one method um, to use IR to determine which functional groups are present. The other option that we have when we're using IR is if we're dealing with a molecule that we are pretty sure we know what it is, we just need some verification, we can take the IR spectrum of that sort of an unknown molecule and we can compare it to what we would expect the spectrum to be. So we're sort of referencing, using the IR as a reference. Um, but in this, in this particular video, on this particular worksheet, we're really just gonna be focusing on using IR to help us identify which functional groups are present in the molecule. And we're just gonna look at a lot of spectra. So this is the IR spectrum of cyclohexane. Here's the cyclohexane molecule. And all that we're going to do for the cyclohexane molecule, because it does not have any functional groups present, we don't expect to see a lot of stuff in the IR spectrum, and we don't. It's pretty basic. And we just want to locate the presence of the carbon-hydrogen peaks. The carbon-hydrogen peaks are ones that you should always get used to seeing because they're pretty much always present in all of our molecules located around 3,000 wave numbers. Here is cis-2-pentene. So this molecule is a little bit more interesting because it has a functional group. So let's find the carbon-hydrogen peaks and the carbon-carbon double bond peaks. Carbon-hydrogen peaks are always hanging out here around 3,000. They don't always look exactly the same from one molecule to another. Their shape will vary, but they're always going to be in the same spot. And what about the carbon-carbon peak? Remember, our double bonds are somewhere in the 1,500 to 3,000 area. So this right here is going to be our carbon-carbon double bond right there. How do I know that it's this one and not this one specifically? Well, in the previous video, I showed you to just kind of draw a line at 1500 wave numbers and ignore everything to the right of that line. So ignoring, I'm ignoring these peaks right here. Uh, let's see what we have next. So here we have a an alkyne, and we want to look for the three important peaks in this particular spectrum. So let's practice this drawing the line situation. Here's our 1500 mark, and we're going to ignore all of these things right here. Also, here's our 3000 wave number mark. So we have a peak to the left of 3000. That's a special hydrogen, a strong, sharp, pointy peak on this side of the spectrum is an indication of the hydrogen at the end of an, a terminal alkyne, this guy right there. We also have, of course, our standard regular carbon-hydrogen peaks, and then we have this little guy, a carbon-carbon triple bond. Uh, if I didn't know that the molecule was an alkyne, how would I know that this is a triple bond versus a double bond? The triple bonds do tend to show up more in the center of this particular area. Well, the double bonds tend to kind of hug that um, 1500 line. Locate two important peaks in the spectrum of butanol. Here's our, our two butanol. Here's our two butanol molecule. Let's go ahead and mark off the parts of the, the spectrum that we want to focus on right there. So we're ignoring all of these things over here. There is really nothing in this area right there. These are our carbon hydrogen peaks, and this right here would be our OH peak. Locate three important peaks in the spectrum of hex and al and aldehyde. So we'll get rid of, we'll draw our 1500 mark. We'll ignore everything over here. We'll draw our 3000 mark. This looks kind of interesting. Like this might trick me into thinking, hmm, maybe I have an amine because this kind of looks like a nitrogen hydrogen peak. Um, this this is definitely one that we should be paying attention to, a strong kind of broad peak in this area. That's our carbon-oxygen double bond. We also have our carbon-hydrogen bonds down here as usual. And then aldehydes have this characteristic. Well, they have two peaks. One of them in this spectrum is kind of hidden. They have two peaks around 27 and 2800 wave number that is in, uh, indicating the carbon-hydrogen bond of the aldehyde right there. And so there's this little one that's kind of hidden but it is there. And next we have hexanone, a ketone. So let's draw off 
Let's mark off our spectrum. We're looking for two peaks this time, of course, the carbon hydrogen peaks that, and then here is our carbon oxygen double bond. Always very strong and um, broad, not hugely broad, but not sharp and pointy and spiky. Now we're gonna do a comparison, acetophenone, which is this molecule right here, comparing that to hexanone right here. Um, identify the one important peak. So let's mark off our 1500. We actually have two important peaks. I don't know why I said one. We'll mark off our 1500, we'll mark off our 3000. We're going to ignore this. This is our carbon oxygen double bond. <laughs> right after I just said that it's not gonna be sharp and spiky, there it is sharp and spiky, of course. Uh, IR is not always 100% reliable. Um, this right here looks like our carbon-carbon double bonds. Definitely not in this place that I would normally expect to see it, but carbon-carbon double bonds uh, peaks are, are oftentimes only medium strength, whereas carbon-oxygen are strong. Identify the absence of a peak that's normally observed. Well, that's gonna be our carbon-hydrogen peak. So we're missing, in this case, we're missing our carbon-hydrogen peak. Not really missing it, because there it is. It's just really, really stubby, short. And this is a characteristic of a benzene ring. So a molecule that does not have very many carbon-hydrogen bonds, aside from the ones that are on a benzene ring, like this molecule right here just has a one CH3 group, we're gonna see a lot of stunting in the, in the normal CH area. So when we're, when we're looking at a molecule and we see, whoa, we're missing our carbon hydrogen peaks, this usually lets us know that we have a benzene ring present. Um, here we have a carboxylic acid. We're looking for two important peaks in the carboxylic acid. So let's draw our lines right there. And um, we have, first of all, a very normal looking carbon oxygen double bond peak. And then we have this really broad peak. So these broad, very dominating, you know, in terms of size, that's always an OH group. There isn't anything that has the potential to spread out like an OH group. OH groups are not always this big and this broad. In fact, we saw an example um, on, these, on this particular worksheet where it was quite a bit shorter and it was also pretty well isolated to the left of the 3000 line. So there's a lot of variation in what we expect to see for the OH group, but regardless, they're just, they're just massive. They're just really wide. Um, and this asks us, why aren't the normal CH peaks visible? Where are they? Um, they, are, they are there in the spectrum, but they are overshadowed by the OH peaks. So the, you can kind of see the end of the um, CH peaks right here. So they're just kind of buried inside this peak and that's why we can't see it. It makes it look like they're not there, but they actually are there. It is possible for the OH peak, if it came down further, to just completely hide the CH peaks entirely. But we just know that they're present in the molecule because they all have carbon-hydrogen bonds. Uh, and then I think this is our last page. Locate the three important peaks in butyl amine. So let's get our 1500 and our 3000. Um, so these, these are going to be our carbon hydrogen peaks. This looks like something that we should pay attention to, but it's actually not. It's probably just like a carbon nitrogen single bond. So one is our CH peaks. The other two important peaks are these guys right here. So these are the NH peaks. Um, they are broad, but not as broad as an OH peak. And they're also um, medium to weak intensity. So they're never going to be super strong. This is about as strong as they're going to get. And they have one peak in inside the big peak, they have one peak for each NH bond in the molecule. So the fact that we have two little spikes on this, this tells us that it's an NH2. If we had a molecule that was just one hydrogen, so if it was just NH, something like this, then we would only see one little spike over here. So there's two individual peaks for the NH. And those are the three important peaks. And then last but not least, the four important peaks in this molecule. Let's draw our lines, 1,500 and 3,000. We've got our carbon-oxygen double bond, very broad and very strong. We have our standard CH peaks. And then we have our two NH peaks right there.